podcast. Okay. Okay. Listening to Dave's message on the phone. Dave called. Dave called. What's Dave got to say? With the what? <laughs> T bird. Oh. <laughs> Not in this weather. <laughs> You're the T bird? <laughs> that might be kind of funny. <laughs> Back through the windshield. Yeah. I just need to get it. Hauled out of there. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that episode. It sucks. How oh, it does. <laughs> Too many. I was doing oh, back then. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year, Dave. Bye, Dave. Okay, that was, uh, you guys are watching a little bit of the behind the scenes of the 70s Buzz podcast. This is, this is basically, so we go eat at Callahan's, we come to Todd's, and then we listen and read all our messages and get ready, and then we just turn on the recorder and go. So you guys are getting a little pre-show here on YouTube. Speaking of hit record, we're recording. Ooh. And I apologize if I'm coughing. I'm, I go to the ENT on Thursday. And nobody bought you a cough button for Christmas. Oh, well. Although, I, you know what else? I, you know what I got? One of, my, one of my coolest presents was from... I got a cool... Well, oh, no, 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 Yeah, okay. Play, play the music and then we'll talk about it. Because I got a, a Christmas gift I want to talk about, too. Ah... Uh, so. Okay, it's been a week since I've done this. I should know. No, really. it's been two weeks. Oh, I was here last week. But you didn't like. Uh, I guess you did. Yeah. I wasn't here very long. <laughs> but you know, hang on. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Believe it or not, I know what I'm doing. There it is. 300 and some episodes, and I'm still up to find bum, bum, bum. So they can't hear that? <laughs> no. I don't know if they can. Yeah. One of these days we'll get sophisticated enough to be able to. Yeah. I think if we use my mixer, we could hear it maybe. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> the intro's playing. If you're wondering. If you wanted to, you could stick that in. <laughs> I think it looks funnier with us just sitting here. <laughs> real hard not to do it. Now, speaking of, I told you well, the whole time I was on vacation, I never coughed. Did I tell you that? Huh. Yeah, the whole time I was in Las Vegas, and I, I was there three days, and then I went up to Reno and Tahoe for like six days. I think I was in Reno by the time I realized I wasn't coughing anymore. Flew back on Christmas Day, flew in, went to Justin's uh, in-law's house, started coughing. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. <coughs> yes, it is. Could be the year. Who knows? Better have, better have that checked out. I'm going to check it out. Thursday. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Wheeler! What's happening? You know, it's been literally, it hasn't been one week since we've recorded. <laughs> it's been two weeks since we've recorded. Because we recorded, we missed a episode last week because of my wife not telling me what day she wanted to leave. <laughs> and the week before that, we didn't do that episode because you left and we'd recorded that week's the week before. So we literally haven't, we didn't go to Callahan's together and eat dinner and haven't recorded for two weeks. Didn't that mean three weeks? Well, yeah, I guess it, it would have been three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah we recorded. Yeah. But we met, basically missed two Tuesdays of not recording. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, but we're back. We're back. First of the year. Uh, you Happy guys, year. Uh, thanks for coming back to the Buzz, 70 Buzz <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's later. Uh, hit us up at 580-541-3805. That is the official Buzzhead hotline or email buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. And you can also text that 580-541-3805 like... Like Julie and Gretchen did this week. Julie and Gretchen. Julie and Gretchen, we got a nice text. Texas. 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 What's the plural of text? Text. Texts. Texts. Yeah. yeah. And I got nice texts. From, from, from them. From, uh, from Julie... Loza, 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 Loza. I don't know why it's so hard to say. Julie Lozowski. This is <laughs> Gretchen Waller. I like Gretchen's last name easier. Because oh, we went to Waller Junior High. Yeah, that's right down the road. Yeah, we still there. Um, and then actually, uh, last week on the 20th, uh, Gretchen called and wished you happy birthday. Thank you, Gretchen, for the happy birthday. And I think she said she called on my birthday. Well, that was your birthday, the 20th. Yeah, so yeah, so thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and yes, Gretchen, we get all your messages. We just may not always uh, re reply to all of them because uh, sometimes there's a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's like Jeffrey and Greg Daw. I mean, I, and th I'm not complaining or anything. I think no, no. I might get two, maybe two emails a week. Or one, one or two from Greg, and I don't, I don't mention them all. I just, I kind of mention, so it's not, yeah. So we get pretty much all your messages. We just don't mention all of them all of the time. So right, and you said you just sent away with Greg sent a Greg oh sent yeah something? yeah. So Greg, uh, Greg sent uh, an email, and he sent us, I guess, what I would consider a Christmas present, yeah. which I went ahead and opened. And told you about it, mm -hmm. and we will unveil uh, Greg's '70s Christmas present on next week's Facebook Live because we can show you. Yeah, sounds very cool. Thank so. you, thank you in advance, Greg. Yeah, very cool. Uh, real quick, his email. Uh, he was talking about he he says so he just emailed. He says, "I see what you did there." As an homage to all the reruns we watched during the 70s, you went with one of your own. Very clever. Ah, of yeah. Course, of course, I'm just kidding around. Uh, let's see. He says, you both have slaved over this podcast for almost seven years. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, we don't like to take a week off. We just, it couldn't be helped this time. Kind of happened. Yeah. Uh, and then he, he, he mentioned a whole bunch of stuff and had a story about uh, Green Stamps. He sent a lot of pictures. Uh, and stuff about green stamps. So, and then he also like I think he might have added. So you know he and Staten are taking all of our episodes and and cataloging them. And Greg came up with this like category list that Staten's now using. <laughs> and I and I think and I didn't really I didn't look at the list the things <coughs> he sent, but he he sent it to me and Staten. I think he's added a couple of categories. Oh, good lord! Which I and I don't know what those categories are. But there's anyway, there's probably new ones. Like how many times Todd coughed? It could, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to look and see what the new list is. But, I apologize. Uh, didn't have time. So, but anyway, yeah, we appreciate uh, all the effort of you, Mr. Pep John, and uh, you, Mr. Dodge, and then Staten. Uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, he had emailed last week. There was an episode. Ah, I'll have to. I'll have to look at it. Where I said something about something, and he. He proved me wrong, and so I was going to well, give—I was going to give him kudos to uh, what it was. Oh, there was something about a building. Oh, a building in downtown Enid had a roller rink in it in the basement, and I was like, "Yeah, hey, I don't know anything about that." Well, he found the information on it, <laughs> but come to find out, I had posted the information like a year before we did the podcast, so I knew. I just didn't. I, you know, like I told so, him. So you did it on your Enid Buzz stuff? Yeah. So when he Googled that, did he find your Enid Buzz I, article? I don't, I don't know where he found I it. I bet but, he did. But anyway, so we know more than you think we know. It's just when we're doing the show, we're not thinking. We're not. I'm not thinking about a roller rink in Enid. And so I'm concentrating on kind of what we're talking about and what he's saying. And, and so that's why sometimes we don't get all the facts right. And, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. And so Dave, what, Dave called. I was gonna say what day. So Dave, did Dave call just once or twice? Because I told him to call last week in case we had an episode. I don't. Anyway, Dave called. Uh, he called the twelfth, and then this 
to the New Yorker today. Yeah. Do, we, we, do we listen to the 12th one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all we do. Okay. So he talked about, uh, we don't want to get deep into college football at all, but talked about the college football games. Um, Asked about and the then T-Bird. About the T-Bird. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I've got plans of going to get it out of the garage and, and bringing it to my house and fixing it up. It's just time. Just haven't had the time here time, lately. Time, time, time. But I'll get it. And the thing is, I have to have a wrecker or a uh, tow truck. Go get it out of the garage and tow it to my house. And I just pretty much haven't done that yet. So I'll get that. that and drag it. Yeah, could do that. It's not that far. No. I mean, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll get it. It's like six blocks. Yeah. And then Dave asked, he, he was like, is that the first show you guys ever missed? Yep. I yeah. think, I think, yeah, last week. Because the week before we didn't do a show because we had recorded it a week earlier. Because I was going to be going. Yeah. But last week we officially did not record a new episode. Yeah. So Monday I get home and I'm like, hey, what are we? Kurt's like, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Todd, not be here. So Todd leaves on his <coughs> vacation knowing, and knowing that he's going to be gone at least a week. Nine days. And then my wife, I don't even think my wife told me. I think one of the girls said something about leaving, or my wife might have, leaving on Tuesday. And I'm like, what? I'm like, why would we leave on Tuesday? I, The game's on Thursday, so you leave on Wednesday to be down there by Wednesday night. The game's Thursday night late, so that gives you all day Thursday. And she's like, I don't want to get down there. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like I didn't tell Todd. I didn't. I didn't plan for this. I didn't plan to leave on Tuesday morning, and so I went ahead and left on Tuesday morning, and uh, so we just uh, didn't, couldn't do, couldn't record. Yeah, we could have recorded. I I thought about getting to San Antonio and calling in and recording from the phone, but the traffic was so bad uh, that we were an hour late and. Nah. It just wouldn't work out. Uh, so. it would, although it did take me a minute to figure out how to replay that first episode because I wanted to put a little beginning on it. Uh, and I was like, and I don't know where it's at on my computer. I mean, seven, seven, no, seven years ago. So I'm like, it's in there somewhere. Well, just FYI, you could have downloaded it from Spreaker. That's what I did eventually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what, 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 what? what? And, I was, you know, I was getting a little panicky. You know, oh. I get like, oh crap, where to go? It's gonna be somewhere, somewhere, it's in there somewhere. So yeah, that's what I did. So uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, and then real quick, uh, if you are one of our loyal Buzzhead Radio podcast listeners, be sure and listen to tonight's episode because there's going to be some changes, and we'll just announce those. So so real quick, uh, how was you, you and I just had dinner, but didn't really talk a whole lot because we knew we were going to be on the podcast. Um, so, how was your big trip? It was fine. I thought we were going to talk about that on Buzzard, Buzzard Radio. Well, but we're going to talk a little bit, and then were you going to talk about a Christmas gift here or on Buzzhead Radio? What Christmas gift? Uh, you said something about a Christmas gift you got. Oh, yeah, the, my eye massager. Oh. <laughs> it's not that big a deal, but I've never seen one before. Oh, okay. Derek got me an eye massager. So, you put this thing on, it looks like the, you know those Oculus things that the uh-huh. kids play? It's kind of like that. And it like it massages like, your eyeball. Yeah, and it's got heat and it's got a little music going. You think you think, oh, that's that would be weird. <laughs> it was like everybody had to try it out Christmas Eve. Oh yeah, everybody loves it. Hmm. I should have had it. I should have had it here. I could have. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to talk about one of my so my, and so we ran down to San Antonio for the Alamo Bowl, and again we'll talk more about that on uh, this Buzzhead Radio. But one of so. You know, to make Christmas shopping easier, we've started a kind of a tradition of send me a list. You know, like give me a, at least a list of things you want, and I'll get you a few of the things. That we, and then that way, at least you get something for Christmas that you really wanted. So basically, I kind of looked at if I were going to buy like five things right now, what am I about to buy? And then I just didn't buy them and just sent the list to Denise and said, okay, give me this. Well, one of the items was a uh, cheap trick album. Hmm. And so I don't, I've only got one cheap trick album. And then I found this one called cheap trick authorized greatest hits. So what they did in 2000 was, so there's like a 1991 greatest hits, but it's like 
I think the record company made it. This one from 2000, all of the members of the band picked their greatest hits and put it on this double album. And so I listened to it this morning for the first time. Man, it was awesome. Hmm. I mean, it's one of those not only single album, but double album that you can just put on and just listen. And every song is a hit. It's great. So anyway, so that was one of my Christmas gifts was Cheap Trick, Authorized Greatest Hits. And that was 2000? And it was uh, released in 2000. I think the one I got was like re-released in 2020. You're going to say that's 24 years ago, so. Yeah, so this this was like a 2020 album. Have they done anything new since then? I know they tour a lot, but I don't know if they're adding, I don't know when the last time they added new music was. Huh. Christopher Todd would know. CTD would know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. So anyway, okay. Yeah. Enough of the holly crap. Thank goodness that crap's over with. <laughs> get back to yeah, I'm about ready. I'm I'm wanting to get back to a regular schedule, but of course it's gonna be disrupted in two weeks heading off to Orlando. So Yeah. So we're gonna have to do the shuffle thing again, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get it taken we'll care of. We'll figure all that out. So <laughs> last week's episode, which would have been the last Tuesday of 2023, the intent was to do a episode of all of the great icons, 70s icons we lost, passed away in 2023. Yeah. So we just decided to go ahead and, and move it to this. And I think at least one died after that, so we would have missed one. Yeah, but that we, that that person would be on next year's. But he died in twenty twenty three. Oh, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they died after Tuesday. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think, yeah. Come to find out. Yeah. Uh, th yeah. There's a lot of people on the list, and so yeah, we're not going to be able to go through all of them. I don't think we'd have time. We'll try to hit on the most iconic. I'm sure a lot of them. I'm sure we doubled up. I'm sure we got something. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, wow. And what I'm realizing is because of our ages, if you all grew up in the seventies, we're hitting that age, you know, we know cause our classmates, we're losing classmates. And so I have a, unfortunately I have a feeling every year from here on out, the list is just going to get bigger and more iconic and, and we're just going to lose a lot of our seventies icons. So soon we'll be all gone. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we'll be old by then. Yeah. Yeah. One day. It'll be a while. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not planning on getting old until I'm about 91. Maybe 91. Not going to work. That's not real work. Yeah. You're not going to. That's real work. I'm not going to. Do it. There you go. And right. If you're watching this. Oh, and then real quick, I didn't really say it at the beginning, but I decided to record this episode by filming it. And so we'll throw this on... I'll probably throw it on Curtis Tucker, uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker. So it'll be on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to see us do an episode, kind of what Todd's background looks like and everything, if you haven't seen it in a while. Uh, well, so they can't see my eight foot I was, was, was going to say, the thing is, Todd's oh. studio is the Elvis shrine. <laughs> except we can't really see his Elvis stuff because it's kind of more in front of the camera right now and then mine is more like yeah pop culture 70s so but what i don't know uh one of these days we'll figure out how to rig up a camera that can move around and show you the whole studio yeah but for now uh, if you want to watch us on uh, this episode go to youtube Check us out there. YouTube. What? Curtis, where? Uh, Out of who? YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in Curtis Tucker. Or for a while, they were making <coughs> me use Curtis Tucker TV. Um, but now I think I've got... It's like at Curtis Tucker. If you go to YouTube and type in at Curtis Tucker, it my channel will pop up. Okay. 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 And we'll post a link. You know, it's all this weird stuff. They didn't have that back in the 70s. Oh, they try to find stuff on the internet. There wasn't an internet back in the 70s. Really. Well, they did have encyclopedias, but uh, yeah. they didn't have it in the 60s. Oh, heck no. And they kind of had some weird stuff, technically, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, they did. But looking stuff up in the 70s was the best. <laughs> and why is that, Mr. Wheeler? Because <laughs> that was the greatest decade down to the end. <laughs> I don't know how we got into it. We made it. <laughs> Full circle, somehow. Well, around. It only took 17 minutes. That's all right. <laughs> So, See, why do you get excited? I get coffee. Sorry. 
don't get coffee. Um, yeah, so let's kind of jump into, and this is just kind of, I think part of this is going to be a reminder of who we all knew who passed away in 2023, but there are going to be a few names on here. Which you, you I like, didn't what? Know. Yeah. Like, what? I didn't know they passed away. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just going to throw one out there real quick. Uh, Jimmy Buffett, which we did talk about recently. We did an episode on uh, Jimmy. He passed away September 1st at the age of 76. And if you guys want to learn more about that, go dig up that uh, Jimmy Buffett episode, which is just a couple months old. Oh, you there? So if I, I don't. I, I was just looking on YouTube. So is that you right there? That's me. Yeah. So I just went on their search bar on YouTube uh -huh. and, and just put at Curtis Tucker. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. You probably just do Curtis Tucker. Yeah, you know, it'll probably take you there too. Yeah. Anyway. So that's how you do it. It's very easy. Jump on there and say hi. Yes, Jimmy. Lost to Jimmy. Uh, September 2nd. That was... That sucked. What's what's one of the biggest ones that hit you the hardest? Uh, didn't you mention... You did a Facebook thing on that, didn't you? That was one of your Facebook questions, I think. Yeah, and I didn't... You know, I don't answer those. But uh, who hit me hard this year? Um, from the 70s. You know, I mean, I don't think any of them, like, because I hadn't been following, like, really anybody that closely, but uh, just finding out that Lance Kerwin passed away was kind of, because he's he was more our age. Yeah. And that was kind of like, oh, wow, people our age. Are, and then even um, Adam Rich. Yeah. Who was a little bit younger. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, if mine would be Bob Barker. Bob Barker, yeah. Bob was pretty iconic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there was one I just came across that I didn't realize it. Robert Blake! He died this year, or last year. Are you sure? Yeah, March, 20, March 9th. Because I don't think I had, I don't think I had him on my list. And I thought I got about everybody. Wow. Yeah, let me double check. You better double check. Somebody's going to be screaming at their I'll device. I'll fact check myself, but I, I, you know, I was... Yeah, so Bob Barker, uh, on The Price is Right for 35 years, died on August 26th at the age of 99. Yeah, he died this year, March 9th. Wow. But you didn't hear nothing about it. You I know. wonder if it's because of his... Sorted past? Yeah. No, that's well. I, I, I mean, I don't remember seeing him on the list. I don't How crazy is that? Okay. Well, I went to two different places, so I'm going to say it really happened. Okay. You know, um, yeah, Bob. Poor Bob. I had. A, I mean, not. I shouldn't say poor Bob. He had a damn good life. Oh yeah, and just think how like put together and good looking he was at ninety nine. Yeah, mean, sharp as uh, as anything. Tan. Looked like a Hollywood Hollywood celebrity. Uh, Tina Turner. Yeah, that was a pretty iconic loss for twenty twenty three. Uh, dubbed the Queen of Rock and Roll. Passed away at 83 years old, May 24th, and hits, uh, What's the Love Got to Do With It? Let's what's Stay Together, The to Best, do, got to do with it. and she was in films like the 1975 movie, Tommy. Oh, that was a strange, yeah, we've talked about that several times, that was a strange movie. Yeah, and then I think they, they did a movie acid about queen. her. She was acid queen. Yes, she was. And they did a movie about her and Ike, <laughs> her husband Ike. Put some stink on that one. I, I, <laughs> that's a Jim Carrey line. <laughs> hit, hit, hit her again and put some stink on it. <laughs> hey, that's not nice. Uh. <laughs> we talked about this tonight at dinner. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. Canadian folk singer. Best known for, the to me, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, but he also did Sundown and If You Could Read My Mind. If you could read my mind, girl. What? My, my Died in Toronto favorite. May 1st. He was 84. So at least a lot of these icons are making it, you know, in, into their 80s. Yeah, I'm looking here. They're all like 80, 90, 70, 80, 70. Well, I guess if they were icons back then, they wouldn't be young. Well, I mean, like, Lance, I guess Lance Kerwin was like an icon, but just somebody we knew. Yeah. And so some of these are going to be, you're going to be like, oh, wow. I mean, they weren't huge 
name celebrities, but they're people you'll be like, oh, wow, it's kind of sad that that person passed away. Yeah, I see. I didn't have Lance on my list. Ah. What about, uh, I thought I had those two together. Where are they? Um, the Bachmans. We lost two Bachmans in 2020. Oh, that's right. Not far apart. Why? I thought I had them together. Yeah, we did a whole episode about it. Well, half an episode anyway. Yeah. Um, I'll just do them as I get to them. Uh, first one on my list, uh, Tim Bachman. Uh, died at the age of 71 on April 28th uh, with a battle after a battle of cancer. Canadian rocker with uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. Uh, tons of great hits. You ain't seen nothing yet. Taking care of business. Roll on down the highway. Every day. Taking care of business. He was a member of the band from only 73 until 74. And then reunited back in uh, with the band in the 80s. Yeah, I was trying to remember what the, there was some hoopla, there was some, uh, there was something, there was a... I think there was some not getting along yeah. and stuff going. Yeah, and again, I don't know, we, yeah, I think we did that episode combined with somebody else passing away. Yeah, I think so. So check that out. Um, I think that was with uh, Gordon Lightfoot, actually. It might have been, it was, yeah, good. about the same time. Uh, Ryan O'Neill. Yeah, that, yeah, that was... Uh, pretty famous for movies like Love Story, Paper Moon. He died December 8th at the age of 82. His uh, greatest achievement would be being married to Farrah Fawcett. That's right. Uh, they had a son together named Redmond. Mm -hmm. uh, got in a little trouble. I'm not sure what he's up to these days. But uh, yeah, so Ryan O'Neill never known to be uh, the best actor in the whole world. But, he was all right. He's okay. I liked him. I liked him in Paper Moon. Yeah. He kind of reminds me of, uh, I mean, if, uh, like, uh, who would he Who would he be like today? Like, you know, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe like, I don't say Ryan Reynolds, but, you know, that type-ish. Yeah. You know, everybody likes him, but, you know, nothing, he's not going to win the Academy Award. Yeah. Daughter, Tatum O'Neill, who was in Paper Moon with him. I love that movie. I remember going to see it at the movie. I did too, yeah. My mom took me. I remember seeing it with my mom. 73, I think it was? I think it was 73. Could be. Somewhere around there. Early 70s. The only thing I did like about it was his black and white. Yeah, but back in the 70s, it was kind of kind of fun, I think, watching a movie, a, black, a modern black and white movie. <laughs> yeah, if it's a period movie. I, you know. Yeah. Uh, Norman Lear. That's a big one. Uh, legendary television producer. Uh, produced All in the Family. That's uh, the big one. The Jeffersons, One Day at a Time, and other landmark sitcoms. He died December 5th at the age of... He almost made it to how far I'm going to go. He made it to 101. I'm going to out, outlast him by a year. There you go. So uh, I wouldn't doubt it. You, you live, I'm sure you live much cleaner than you did. <coughs> I shouldn't say that. I don't know how to think. Well, I was going to say, right, uh, yeah. So he was most well known because of a lot of his shows uh, hit on hot button topics. Yeah. Which he, he was basically tackling topics that nobody had, which opened the door for what we have today, which is <laughs> nothing's taboo today. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's, he's one of the reasons for that. <laughs> Groundbreaking. Go Norman. And then I guess this one kind of hit me hard uh, Cindy Williams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from, uh, from Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley. She was Shirley. Died uh, at age 75. So she was kind of young. Yeah, 75 to me is way too young. Oh, absolutely. Uh, she was also in American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. She was Laurie Henderson, high school sweetheart of Ron Howard. And uh, basically after Laverne and Shirley, I think she kind of went to Broadway and... Didn't really see her in, in much after that. Yeah. I'm trying to mark these off as we go. <laughs> who you got? Who who iconic you got over there? Uh, Burt Bacharach. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I can't even name all the songs he's he's written. He's he's one of the guys that wrote a lot of songs that somebody else sang. And Rain, you, raindrops keep falling yeah. on my head. Yeah, that was by uh, B.J. Thomas. They used to have that 45. They used to play it. I think it was one of those 45s I would let play 
as I went to sleep and it would replay, you know, how the arm would. Yeah. And I must have heard that song a million times. <laughs> I, used to, I used to sleep with my, my cross headphones. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I went through a period in the 70s where I slept with my headphones yeah. on. Uh, he died at age 94. Yeah. Uh, so who else we got here? We talked about Jimmy. Uh, Robbie Bachman, real quick. The other. Robbie Bachman, yeah. Uh, drummer for the 70s band, uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. He died at 69, again, uh, born in Canada. And so just another uh, part of that group. Uh, Lisa Loring. Lisa Loring. Did you catch that? I probably did. Now, she was iconic in the 60s, but we watched her show in the 70s. Uh, she was the original Wednesday Addams. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't think she, I don't know what she did after being Wednesday. I'll get, I think I've got, I think I have got at least one thing she did. When I get down, I'll find it. Um, what about Raquel Welch? Oh, yeah. Uh, February last year. Died at the age of 82. Um, she did some, yeah, some so so movies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but she, she was a darn good looking woman. Yeah, she was uh, iconic as a sex symbol. That was yeah. it. She was a sex symbol. Yeah. yeah. Lots of posters. Uh, uh, Suzanne Summers. Yeah, Sly Master Woman. Uh, Three's Company. She died in October at the age uh, just shy of her 77th birthday. She dealt with breast cancer yeah. for years and years. Did we do a episode on her or Three's Company yet? No. We haven't. Somehow, we I remember we mentioned her in we, one episode. Oh, yeah, we've talked so, about her. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so she was uh, way, and she was also in the movie uh, American Graffiti. As well. That's right, the blonde and the T-bird. The blonde and the T-bird. I think that was her first acting role, even though she didn't really act in it. <laughs> did, she, did she have any, did she say anything? It seems like she, was she on the phone at the end, or for some reason I'm thinking she, there was, she had a line, or she said something, but I don't really remember if she did or not. Well, does she, she does she got credit? Is she is she credited on the? Don't you have to have a speaking? Don't you have to say something before you get credited? Uh, Unless you're like real popular already. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, so I don't know. Hmm. I have to we'll have to research that. Have we done an? I don't think we have we done an episode on American Graffiti. No, I don't think. No. I don't oh, think we so. got so many subjects. I got, see, I got to write that on the do list. Always thinking we're running out of. Oh, you know what I was going to put on the list too. To do list. Um, What's that? Even though they didn't come out in the seventies, they had a. Um, ah, what's the black and white show? where weird things happen, 30 minute show, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. They had a Twilight Zone marathon over New Year's. And I thought that might be kind of a fun episode because we watched Twilight Zone in the 70s even yeah. though they were all done earlier. Huh, I'm gonna put that in here too. This list is great and getting longer. So on my post this morning on Facebook, and I need to write this one down. I'm going to start keeping track of all the synchronicities that happen. I saw you say that yeah. throughout the year. And one of the so I I I have not seen the Twilight Zone in I don't know how many decades. You hear that? Is it me breathing? It seems like it only makes a sound when I'm talking. I hear voices. Not right now. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, so. I mean, have you watched Twilight Zone in a while? Not since probably the 70s. Okay, I haven't watched Twilight Zone in maybe since the 70s or 80s maybe. Mm -hmm. So they had the Twilight Zone marathon on, again, like I said, this last weekend. That means there was a episode every 30 minutes for I don't know how many days. My TV, when I turn my TV on out in the studio... Uh -huh. It comes on, I don't, it doesn't come on the channel that I turned it off on. <laughs> it comes on random channels sometimes. Oh. It came on, on the Twilight Zone. Oh. I don't know why. 
but it did. And the episode that was on had Burgess Meredith. Oh, the library or the library? The yeah, with the thick glasses. Uh -huh. I I don't remember that episode, but that's the one that was on. So I watched it yesterday. I'm going through Facebook and somebody posts a picture of that episode and makes a comment on it on Facebook. And I'm like, <laughs> out of all the shows, out of all the episodes that this person could have commented on and that go, comes in front of me on Facebook, it's that episode that I just happened to randomly catch of a show that I never watch in decades. And it just, I'm like, I don't think it's random, dude. I'm like, how, there's got to be something. Somebody's pulling strings. There's something there. So anyway, that's I'm going to write that one down on my list of synchronicities. Some synchronicities. Weird, weird little synchronicities that happen. Huh. They're signs. People don't... Some people... I don't know. I love the movie Signs. Yeah. Because I'm always... I'm like, why do I do that? And then I'm like, I'm doing this because 10 years from now, something's going to happen... And, I, and I'm going to use what I'm doing right now. I'm going to say, that's why I've been doing this for 10 years. Because, like, Sonic, you know, is like the girl not drinking the water and leaving uh -huh. water all over the house. Yeah. You know, why is she doing that? Well, it's all leading up to this one event. So, anyway. Yeah, that's one of the movies you got to watch a couple times. Oh, I love Signs. Yeah. It's, it's such a cool movie. <laughs> uh, Suzanne Summers, Rocco Welch. Uh, and then I mentioned this one earlier. Lance Kerwin. Yeah. Uh, who was James at 16? Was he James at 15? And then James at 16? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think 15 uh, was the first one. Yeah, he died. And then he was also in the miniseries Sal Salem's Lot. He died in January at the age of 62. So basically just a year older than me. What did he die of? You know, sometimes they don't tell, and they didn't really tell in the little blurb that I found on him. Uh what he passed away from. But he was also uh, in the TV series Wonder Woman, Little House on the Prairie, Family, Holback, uh, The New Lassie, blah, blah, blah. But never really, you know, never really had a big, huge career after James is 16. But anyway, I love that show in the 70s. Hmm. Uh, and then real quick, because I would mentioned him with him, Adam Rich from Eight is Enough uh, passed away. I think he had some alcohol, drug and alcohol problems. Oh, uh, he passed away at 54. Uh, the cause of death was not made public, but I think I remember when I mentioned it earlier in the year mm -hmm. that there was speculation. But he also did uh, Chips, Fantasy Island, Small Wonder. The Black! Yeah. Yeah. The Black! So basically one of those child stars that we remember from the 70s. What about David Crosby? Right here on my list, that next one, yeah. Uh, David Crosby died at 81. Uh, and I think we've mentioned... Uh, Michael Hedges from Enid, Oklahoma, known as one of, if not the best acoustic guitar player in the world, hooked up with Crosby, and they were friends in California, uh, and, you know, traded, you know, basically went to each other's studio. So, so anyway, uh, the kid that we ran around with, Brendan Hedges, Michael's younger brother, and Michael's son are putting a documentary together, and they just interviewed David Crosby just a few months before he passed away. So one of his last interviews will be in that documentary on Michael Hedges from Enid, Oklahoma. That'd be cool. So you guys catch that when it comes out. Um, Marty Croft. Oh, really? A huge part of our growing up. Um, Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Yeah, he and his brother Sid uh, had all those more. He died at the age of 86, <laughs> but they did uh, H.R. Puffin stuff, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, and Land of the Lost. Land of the Lost. They also uh, expanded into primetime television with the Camptastic variety shows Donnie and Marie, The Brady Bunch oh, Hour, yeah. The Barbara Mandrell and Mandrell Sisters, and much more. So, I mean, it's, it, his show, their shows were, what do I want to say? Over the top? Well, ho hokey. hokey. I mean, they were good, they were entertaining, but they were just, there was kind of a hokey feel to him, I guess. Yeah. I mean, going back now and looking at uh, H.R. Puffin stuff and Sigmund and the Sea Monsters and Land of the Lost, they're oh, so bad. It's hard to watch. <laughs> they're so bad. But back when you were kids, they were pretty cool in the 70s. Like the $6 million Man. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, um, and then here's, she was in the from in the 70s, uh, Lisa Marie Presley. That was on my list, too. There you go. She died, unfortunately, un, unexpectedly, at the age of 54, just right after the Elvis movie yeah. uh, had been released. So That is you, I'm hearing. Yeah, I think I'm, you're wheezing. Yeah, it must be. You got a whistler? <laughs> so, yeah. as soon, I'm like you. I'm, I'm opposite, though. As soon as... I was fine in Enid. As soon as I, as soon as I got to San Antonio, this left nostril decided to just start draining clear the whole time. Really? The whole time I was there. And At least it's clear. It was clear. There was no cough. There was no sore throat. A, a couple of sneezes every now and then, but and nothing really on the left side. Right side ran the whole time. Isn't that weird. And so now I think that's what you're hearing is it's, it's now that I'm back in Enid, it's clear. And it's gone. It's, but it's I think it's still kind of. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Very weird. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, a whistler is a, a, a booger that's whistling. Like it's not a booger. I think it's... <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a booger. No, I think it's a, <laughs> a schnodder. I mean, I, there's not. if I blew my nose, nothing would come out. So it's like, it must be way up there in the sinuses somewhere. But that's what you're hearing. That's what we're hearing. Yeah. I knew. It's like, I only hear it when I'm talking. Yeah. So I knew it had to it be It almost something. sounded like little voices. I wonder, if we, I wonder if they can hear it on the podcast. I doubt on the video. Or, oh, or on the, on, oh, yeah. You guys should. You guys might be able to hear it on the actual podcast. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> Only when I breathe. Okay, quit reading. Uh, <laughs> who else you got? Uh, Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck. Yeah. Huge in the seventies. Yeah. Started. You know, began in the sixties with the Yardbirds. Uh, who else was in the Yardbirds? There was somebody else in the Yardbirds. Uh, yeah, a lot of people. I'm. Off the top of my head, I'm not going to name anybody in case I get it wrong. <laughs> you drill a little, yeah, you, you play it safe. Uh, Jeff Beck died January 10th. Uh, he was 78. Uh, Stella Stevens. Stella Stevens, one of my favorite because she was the wife on uh, Close Encounters. No, she wasn't. Uh, she, what was she? Hang on, <laughs> let me find her. That was Melinda Dillon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, we'll get to Melinda here in a minute. Oh, she was the wife in uh, Poseidon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Married to uh, Ernest Borgnine. Ernest Borgnine, yes. Yeah, what else did she do? She, she did was, a bunch of, like, TV She was stuff. in the 62 uh, Elvis movie, Girls, Girls, Girls. I was watching it. I watched two Elvis movies last night. I had to stop because it was 2 o'clock. There was another one coming on. Oh, yes. Yeah, Elvis Marathon? Yeah, those damn... I get to binge watching crap, and I next thing I know, I'm up. It's two o'clock in the morning, and I got to get up at seven. What was I watching last? But night? I always wake up at six. Oh, uh, the the big chill. But I went to bed. I was like, I'm not staying up to watch the end. I know how it ends, so I'm going to bed. Yeah, but it was Elvis. I had to watch it. Um. Okay, so Melinda Dillon. Melinda Dillon. She was. I think she. Everything she was, she was a mom. I never show. Yeah, so she, she was a mom, but a wife in Close Encounters, but she was also the mom in A Christmas Story, which they show over and over and over and over again, but that was from the 80s. And Harry and the Hendersons. Harry and the Hendersons, yeah. 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 Uh, way back in the day, she was in a production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but uh, just one of those actresses that you recognize that you probably wouldn't, I had no idea what her name was. I wouldn't have been able to tell you. No, they don't. Uh, Tom Smothers. Tommy Smothers, he died. Yeah, he would have been one we missed. Oh, okay. December, yeah, December 26th. Uh, he was a part of the musical duo The Smothers Brothers, which was always a fun show to watch. A CBS variety show on, uh, again, CBS uh, Comedy Hour. They uh, clashed with CBS over the content of the show, and they were very outspoken for civil rights and free speech. Yeah, they were hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, Shaft. Shaft. I know. I for some reason when I saw that I thought I thought he died like five years ago. Yeah. No. It's that Mandela thing. <laughs> like like we thought Man. Oh. <coughs> uh, 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 we thought Mandela died from prison years ago, but uh, what's his first name? Nelson. Nelson. We thought Nelson died in prison, and wherever the heck he was. But he didn't. He, oh. he got out and, anyway. Yeah, Richard Roundtree died October 24th. He was 80 years old. 
goodness. Yeah, a lot of Shaft movies and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I did see the uh, uh, advertisement for the the remake with uh, 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 the guy that says MF all the time. Uh, uh, oh, good Lord, he's in all the He's in all the. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I guess I haven't seen these. The preview. Uh, uh, it's not a preview. It's like a, it was like a preview for. It, it did it like twenty years ago. Oh. They redid it. Uh, uh, not Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, uh, he was in Pulp Fiction. Samuel uh, L. Jackson. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so he was Shaft. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I guess I missed that. Wow. I don't remember watching it either. I just I just saw this. I'm like, when did that happen? I don't yeah. remember that. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Uh, how about Gary Wright? Yeah, yeah. Very well known for Love Is Alive and Dreamweaver. Died oh. in September at the age of eighty. Okay, hang on. Let me back up a little bit. They redid a shaft. They redid it again in 2019. So Samuel L. was in the, the 2000 version. And then somebody else was in the 2019. Right? In. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, Gary Wright. Back to Gary Wright. Yeah, so basically Dreamweaver would be the big. Although he did uh, release 12 albums. Really? I mean, that's kind of like, so one of my favorite artists is a guy named Matthew Sweet, who's probably had at least 12, if not more albums, but you've probably never heard of him. I think that's kind of like Gary Wright. There's some of these artists that have a following, they're just not heard on the radio a lot. It's not mainstream, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gary Rossington, a Very guitarist bad. and the last surviving member of the rock band Leonard Skinner. Oh. He died March 5th at the age of 71. So that's that's pretty sad. But, uh, what about Robbie Robertson? Robbie Robertson, yeah. Another big... Uh, he wrote... He was a... Uh, I think the, the founding member, the guitarist for the band. Uh, yep. Uh, the night they drove with Dixie down and up Cripple Creek. Yeah, he, he wrote those. He was 80 years old. Uh, yeah. Here's I'm going to throw a kind of a weird one out there for you. Eileen Saki. Hang on, don't tell me. Eileen Saki from the 70s. She died at the age of 79. Oh, so she got uh, Eileen Saki, Eileen Saki, Eileen. Okay, I give up. What she did? She was the actress known for playing the spirited owner and proprietor of Rosie's Bar on MASH. Oh! She was uh, the third and longest tenured performer to play Rosie, appearing in eight episodes. She also played a madam in the earlier MASH episode. Her other screen credits include Good Times, Chips, American Hero, Without a Trace, History of the World Part One, and Splash. Huh. Had no idea that she was in that many things. And also Rosie from MASH. I didn't know there was more than one Rosie from MASH. I was going to say, I thought there was only one Rosie. No, there was more. So she she was the most Rosie. <laughs> she was the rosiest. Yeah. And there's another, there's one other gal from MASH that I'll find here pretty soon that uh, has passed away. Okay. How about Treat Williams? Treat Williams. I didn't realize he passed away. Either. Yeah, I kind of remember him passing away. I always kind of liked Treat. He was... Yeah, he was cool. He was another one of those in a lot of movies. Not usually the main star, but he, always one of the main guys. He did some, like, uh, direct, to, direct to video movies, uh, which we'd be now, like, direct to streaming. Yeah. Um, although there were some good, you know, streaming movies out there. Uh, really good streaming movies. Uh, we haven't mentioned Harry Belafonte, have we? No, I didn't have him on my list. Now, Harry didn't do a lot of stuff in the 70s, but, you know, we know of him, you know, through the 70s. Uh, died at the age of 96, uh, a civil rights activist, but also a singer and an actor. What can I say? Uh, he sang Banana Boat, Day-o, Day-o, in 1956. I didn't realize that was him. That was him. Really? Yeah. I'll be darned. Speaking of singers, Tony Bennett died. Yeah. 
Tony, God, he just, he sang, I bet he sang till the day he died. I bet he did. He was singing with Lady Gaga just a year or two ago. Yeah. If not, if not a year ago. Yeah. Well, it would have been, yeah. Yeah. I love my heart in San Francisco. So here's one you guys are not going to know. Sorry about that. But Al Jaffe uh, passed away. I he, didn't know that name. He is an award-winning and record-breaking cartoonist for Mad Magazine. That's why I put that name. He uh, died at 102, which I'm going to meet his record. Uh, he worked for Mad Magazine for 65 years. Oh, crap. Easily the magazine's longest contributor, and he's the one that came up with The Fold. Oh, you know, that's back. cool. Yeah, I yeah. love The Fold. Yeah, and what's funny about that is for my birthday, Staten got me a, it's like a Best of Mash or Mad magazine. So it's got all, it's got his cartoons and Don Martin's cartoons and, and some of the best, I mean, just basically every iconic cartoon you can think of in, in the old Mad magazine is in this one copy. I'll show it on the show next week. I, the thing I liked about it, one of the one of the things I remember most about Mad Magazine is you'd be you'd be like reading something or flipping through it, and then there'd be the little yeah on the cartoons edge. on the margins. Yeah. And usually it was like Spy versus Spy, I think. Well, no, actually, Spy versus Spy had their own page. But, it was there was this, think, this guy named Sergio. A lot of his little cartoons were yeah, that's cool on the, on the borders. That was cool. But do, so, if you guys don't remember Don Martin, he's he had the characters with the kind of the long face and they were usually stepping in dog poop and it'd say glitch or splitch or I got my cartooning style from Don Martin. Yeah, I, can I mean see that's that. that's where I got my cartooning style. So out of Mad Magazine. I can see that. If you didn't know. Um, uh George Tickner. George I didn't I didn't recognize this. He was a co founding member and original rhythm guitarist of Journey. Really? Died at uh, seventy six. Wow. He, he founded the rock band alongside Neil Sean. Well, we know him. Uh, back in 73. So I was not aware of that. Burt Young died. Burt Young. Uh, probably most known for uh, 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 Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. Can Rocky's. you think of anything bigger that he might have been Oh, in? Lord, no. Paulie. Pa he was Paulie. Yeah, he was 83. Yeah. Uh, Although he was in Chinatown, Once Upon a Time in America, The Last Exit to Brooklyn, uh, did 160 film and television appearances. Yeah, yeah, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. But everybody remembers him from Rocky. He was Polly. He was Polly. Uh, Dick Butkus, let's do a little yeah. bit of sports. And, and he, after he got done with football, he did a lot of appearances. He did yeah. TV and movies. Commercials. And, yeah, so... Uh, he retired. He had basically retired from the NFL in 1973. Who did he play for? Uh, Chicago Bears. That's what I thought. <coughs> uh, sports. Bobby Knight died. Ah, uh, Bobby Knight. Uh, November 1st. He was 83. The uh, chair throwing coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. He was like the. Uh, God had to be the most violent. Not say we want to say violent, but. What's a good word? It wouldn't, I wouldn't say violent. It wasn't violent. He just had a temper. Temper, yeah. Yeah, the biggest temper in uh, college basketball as far as coaching. Yeah. Uh, Bernie Marsden, the rock and roll blues guitarist who rose to fame with the metal band Whitesnake in the 70s and 80s. Oh, really? He passed away. Whitesnake was in the 70s? Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess it was. They, they formed in 78. Okay. Okay, uh, Colin Burgess, the original drummer for ACDC died. Yeah. December 16th, he was 77. Uh, I'm trying to see if I got any more music-related uh, passings. Fred White, drummer from Earth, Wind & Fire, passed away oh. at 67. That's kind of early. Yeah, uh, so uh, here's kind of iconic for me, and one of the reasons my daughter has her name, Piper Laurie. Oh, really? No, she was uh, probably most well-known to a lot of people as uh, the mother in the 76 horror film Carrie. But if you go back to some of her 50s and 60s movies, she was hot. Oh, yeah. She was oh, very yeah. hot. So I always liked that name, Piper Laurie. I got one more actor, Alan Arkin. Alan Arkin, yeah. Died in June. Lots of movies, lots of stuff. He's funny. 
funny, funny, funny. And I only got two more. Who else? Um, Rosalind Carter. Yeah. She died November 26, the age of 96. And uh, I think the old man's still kicking, isn't he? Jimmy? Just barely, yeah. Just barely. As far as I know. And I got one more politician. Henry Kissinger died. Ah, oh, I used to love Henry. <laughs> he was always well-dressed. I mean, was he always in a tuxedo? I don't know, but he always talked so <laughs> slow. <laughs> <laughs> he died November 29th at the age of 100. Wow. Made it to 100. That's, uh, we've checked everybody out. Oh, Michael Warner died. Oh, that's another actor. Just Tris. Michael Warner? Michael Lerner, uh, let's see, Barton Fink. Um, he was 81. Huh? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't add any more to my notes because I thought, yeah, I know who that is. It's M-I-C-H-E-L, Michael Lerner. I got, A-L is Michael. Well, the one I've got is E-L. That's Michelle, isn't it? Well, it's a dude because it says he was 81. Yeah. Uh, what did he do? He was an actor who was nominated for an Oscar for Barton Fink. Uh, he played... What the heck's Barton Fink? I think it was a, a character in a movie, I think. Oh. Uh, let's see. He was in an episode of Dr. Kildare in 68. He shared a flat with John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Oh. Appeared oh. on Ono's experimental film, Smile. Which is also... Uh, in TV shows like uh, Brady Bunch, Glee, Entourage, MASH, and the Bob Newhart Show. Oh, well, there you go. Well, he passed away, too, in April at the age of 81, like you said. Uh, David McCollum, he was uh, oh, the guy from Uncle. Man from, man Uncle, from yeah. Uncle, He passed away. Yeah. Uh, Dwight Twilley, a lot of you may not know Dwight Twilley. He's actually from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, he was a pop singer and songwriter. He sang uh, I'm on Fire and Girls. He died at 72. Um, I'm on Fire? Why does that sound familiar? I think we probably recognize the songs. We'd have to... He, he scored a top 20 hit with I'm on Fire in 1975. And then Girls was a hit in 84. Oh, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen did it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but uh, Dwight Twilley did it, too. He, did he write, write it? Write, uh, wrote, <clears throat> write he, it? He did it in, what I say? 75. I think he said 75. Oh, I don't know oh. who wrote it. No telling. Um, who else do I have? Oh, the uh, guitarist for ABBA, Lass, La, Lassie, Lassie Wellander, passed away at 70. Uh, keyboardist for the Kinks, uh, John Gosling passed away at 75. And then here's another uh, MASH actress, Judy Farrell, actress best known oh. and writer for her role as Nurse Abel on uh, MASH. She I first appeared on MASH in 1976. Um, I'm confused. Denny Lane, the co founder of the Moody Blues and Wings. Passed away at the age of 79. Uh, Sean Brody, the kid that was in Jaws 2. Uh, Mark Gilpin, he passed away at 56. Okay, we might get some backlash on this one. On which one? The Arm on Fire. Because apparently Bruce Springsteen wrote it. Well, he might have, yeah. I mean, he might have wrote it, but Dwight Twilley. Did it win? Well, it looks like he wrote it in 80. No, oh, well, maybe it's a different song. It just has the same name. Ah, oh, they do. I'm, like I'm on fire. I'm on fire with Bruce Springsteen. Dwight Twilley, the power pop singer and songwriter known for songs including I'm on fire. Okay, I'm just looking for that song. Uh, Twilley was inspired to go after a career in music after watching the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. He formed the group Oyster and... Phil Seymour in the late 60s, and they eventually changed their name to Dwight Twilley Band. They scored a top 20 hit with I'm on Fire in 1975. He looks like, he looks like Jim Morrison there. On that cover. Well, they could have used Jim Morrison on the cover. You hey, never know. Ryan Reynolds here. It's a new year. Oh, hi, Ryan. Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. I, I do like Ryan. Uh... Anything else? I got some more, but uh, oh, 
the Iron Sheep from oh, Kevin yeah. Jefferson. He passed away at 81. Is that I'm on fire? By the way, totally. 1975. Kind of like it. I do too. I like it better than Bruce Springsteen's. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, right Sweet. there. Sweet. Yeah, very cool. Well, how, how about Gina Lola Brigida? Gina Lola Brigida died? Passed away at the age of 95. I just like saying her last name. I think everybody did. Because <laughs> she of, was she was hot. She was oh, yeah. she was modeling. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, she she had one of those names that looked like it's really hard to say, but it was really easy to say. Well, once you said it, yeah. Once you learn how to say it, uh, I'm not going to try to say it again because I'll mess it up. <laughs> George George Funky Brown, uh, drummer from Cool and the Gang, passed away. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, Gene Knight, the singer of Mr. Big Stuff. Uh, passed away at 80. Uh, Richard Franklin, best known for his role as Captain Mike Yates on Doctor Who. Passed away at 87. I have never seen an episode of Doctor Who. I have not either. And I don't even want to. Uh, and then Nick Benedict, if you were a fan of All My Children back in the 70s. Oh, there's a bunch of soap opera. Yeah, he, are, he passed away. For some reason, if you were in soap opera back then, you're, they're dropping like flies right now. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm in the water. I think that you said the drummer of ACDC. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, and then I just threw one in. Uh, John Rom Romita Sr., he was uh, one of Marvel's uh, best uh, comic artists. He did. He basically uh, did The Amazing Spider-Man and uh, a lot of the iconic comic covers that you see this guy did. So, so there's our list of some of the most iconic people we lost. Some more iconic than others, but they are gone nonetheless. Just kind of interesting. Just wanting to remember them and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, thanks. Thank them for all they did. Yeah. If you got, if we left, I, there were. I mean, we left some people off the list, but like you say, a lot of them were soap opera stars or sports stars or people that I don't think anybody would really. I mean, there was directors and producers. Oh, and, oh yeah. You could. Yeah. If you go down that list. Yeah. So there's. Yeah. But, I don't want to poo-poo them. They're, I'm sure they're important too, man. But uh, they weren't iconic to us. Yeah. If we miss some some glaring big celeb, uh, let us know. 580-541-3805 via call or text. Or you can email buzz at buzzheadmedia.com and let us know. And uh, it's kind of good to be back on track, Mr. Wood. <laughs> yeah. Dave was, Dave was relieved. Oh, see, what, what did Dave text me last night? No, I don't think Dave has my number. Uh oh, I for some reason we always communicate communicate we always communicate through uh, messenger. Yeah, he's a big messenger communicator. Um, oh, he sent me a picture. Oh, I forgot to show you that. It was just. Oh yeah, he sent me that too. too. It's a in a Facebook group. Yeah, it's uh, a it's a Facebook group on banana seat bikes. Super cool. But they don't they you don't buy or sell. You just show off. Oh, I was wondering. Yeah, I've never seen one. A that's, lot of that them, seat's a little different. Yeah, you ought to look. Have you clicked on the group yet? Uh, just quickly. It's like people that like modify old '70s bikes. They're all they're they're bikes you've never seen before because they've modified them. Oh, like crystal mods. Yeah, and not all of them, but a lot of them are like you're like, oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> and the reason they're not for sale is because they'd be oh. tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So he said he sent that picture. I said, so cool. I said, did you have a nice Christmas? He said. I did. How about you? I said, yeah, busy, but good. He goes, I'll call in the night. Are you guys recording tomorrow? I said, yep. He goes, good. We are back on track. <laughs> back on track. Yeah. So we, we, uh, we did not set out to miss an episode, but it happened. So no big deal. It was yeah. the last episode of the year. So really, yeah, not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, oh, and so don't forget to head over to Buzzhead Radio. If you guys, uh, <laughs> listen to that podcast there are some big changes coming up over there and we're going to want uh, your feedback and we're going to talk about our trips and i've got something pretty cool to talk about as well a subject that i'm going to hit on over there as well so very cool guys head over there i guess we're gonna get out of here see, you later. see ya pardon me i burped 
Thanks for watching. I'm going to shut that off, and then we're going to record the other episode. I'm going to go pee. <coughs> and cough. And cough. Probably spit out a loogie here as soon as Curtis turns that off. A minute and...